Around 1967, an American engineer and a scientist, Carver Mead, met the biophysicist Max Delbruck. As they spent time, Delbruck lit a small interest in Mead's head about transducer physiology, which explains the transformations that occur between the physical input starting a perceptual process and eventual phenomena. Mead, fascinated by what he heard, started observing the graded synaptic transmission in the retina, and thought of treating transistors as analog devices, rather than digital switches. This was the moment that started the concept of neuromorphic computing, in 1980. So what is it meant by neuromorphic computing? Neuromorphic computing is a complex and deep subject that combines several fields like biology, physics, science, mathematics, electronic engineering, and computer science. Combining all these fields, it focuses on the development of brain-inspired computer architectures in hopes to build computers as efficient as the biological brain. In short, neuromorphic computing focuses on building brain-inspired analog machines. But these are not equal to AI neural networks running on regular computer hardware. Neuromorphic computing strives to build physical artificial neurons that closely mimic the biological neurons. The difference between artificial intelligence and neuromorphic computing is that, artificial intelligence focuses on giving conventional computers the ability to work like a human, on a specific, narrowly defined area or a problem. On the other hand, neuromorphic computing is trying to build computers that function the same as the human brain does. Although at the current level, it is impossible to completely replicate the human brain with electronic devices. So, how do neuromorphic computers work? As neuromorphic computer systems are focused on physically developing neural networks with close resemblance to the human brain. So the basic computing primitives are physical artificial neurons that mimic their biological counterparts. So first, let's look at how these neurons function. Unlike conventional von Neumann computers, these artificial neurons communicate using analog electrical charges, and use the properties of the signal, like amplitude and generated time, to encode the data within analog pulses. Neurons have associated threshold values for the electrical charges they accumulate. When the threshold limit is reached, the neuron fires an electrical pulse. This pulse travels through its output synapses and delivers the encoded message to thousands of neighboring neurons through dendrites, which act as the input terminals of neurons. Neurons also have an associated leakage rate, which determines the discharging rate of their gathered electrical charge, as time passes. Over time, activities on a neural network tweak the parameters like, threshold value of the neurons, associated with a particular activity. This tweaking process allows the system to learn and adapt to handle the activities more efficiently as the system gains more exposure over a period of time. When looking at neuromorphic architecture, there is one very apparent difference. Neuromorphic computers replace the separate processing and memory units, which is a distinctive feature in von Neumann architecture, with collocated new devices that can handle both processing and memory functions. Neuromorphic computers are event-based processing systems, meaning that the system components are activated only if a signal comes along. So, even though these systems contain thousands if not millions of neurons, only a small percentage of neurons are activated for a specific activity, while the rest of the system stays deactivated. A single neuromorphic system can learn to handle multiple complex activities, depending on the size and the algorithm of the system. The more neurons the system has the more problems it learns to handle. In this manner, neuromorphic computers are considered to be highly adaptable at handling complex dynamic problems, using a smaller number of computing primitives. Even though the concept just started to catch attention, there are already some advances made in this field. In 2015, IBM introduced a chip known as TrueNorth. And we built this amazing new chip. And we call it TrueNorth. And TrueNorth has 1 million neurons and 256 million synapses. So this is very big in terms of neural networks. It is made up by 5.4 billion transistors. This is the largest chip IBM has ever made. It works in real time, because now a chip like this can take a stream of input data and pass it through a neural network of this massive scale in real time and produce an online output. And finally, it burns only 73 milliwatts of power, which means that if you were to connect the chip directly to an uh, iPhone battery, you could run the chip for at full blast for one whole week. As impressive as this sounds, if scaled up to the size of the brain, the chip becomes 10,000 times more power intensive than the human brain. This chip, once loaded with a neural network model, 
can be used in real time as a sensory streaming inference engine with unbelievable power efficiency. Two years later, in 2017, IBM demonstrated in-memory computing using 1 million phase-changing memory devices, breaking down the major barrier of von Neumann architecture. In the same year, Intel introduced their fifth-generation neuromorphic test chip, named Loihi. Loihi is a 128-core chip, fabricated on 14-nanometer process technology. This chip is developed based on a specialized architecture optimized for spiking neural network algorithms. Spiking neural networks are specialized algorithms designed to efficiently run on the emerging new computers. The design of this type of neural networks closely mimics the functionality of the brain. The Loihi chip includes 128,000 interconnected neurons. Each neuron in this chip contains a learning engine embedded into them. Learning engine allows the developers to access and manipulate the on-chip resources through special programs. Currently, the chip is successfully implemented on a hazardous chemical detection system by recognizing odors of the chemicals. Other than these chips, there are a few supercomputers built around this concept. Among them, Spinnaker, Brainscale S, and Facets projects are the currently most advanced developments in the field. Spinnaker system, located in Manchester, UK, consists of 18 core ARM processors with 128 megabytes of shared local RAM, interconnected with a packet-based network. The system contains more than 1 million cores and runs real-time simulations with considerably low power consumption compared its size. Brainscale S, a large-scale neuromorphic computer model located in Heidelberg, Germany, implements analog electronic models of neurons and synapses. This system is reported to be running 1,000 times faster than the real-time, making it the fastest neuromorphic computer on the planet. The FACETS hardware system developed at the University of Heidelberg contains 180,000 neurons, and the system supports more than 10,000 synapses per neuron. Because of this complex neuron network, the system is considered to have the potential to simulate functions more in line with the biological brain than any other neuromorphic hardware developed to this day. Neuromorphic computing is a relatively old concept. It was revived with the successful development of nanoscale memristive devices, known as memristors. Memristors are unique devices with the ability to process data and store them in their resistive and conductive states. Memristors can modulate its conductivity based on its past programming or learnings, which can be recalled even after a power loss. Memristors are the closest device that mimics the biological neurons, even though in comparison, it is much less capable than their biological counterpart. But, why do we need to completely reinvent computer architecture? Current boom in artificial intelligence development demanded heavy computing power to train large neural networks, which were filled by thousands of CPU and GPU units. This stacking of computing devices showed that Moore's law is approaching its end, as the manufacturers failed to further miniaturize and improve the components of the microchips, due to atomic energy dissipation and consumption limits. Neuromorphic computing concept allows the expansion beyond these limits with higher potential performance and unbelievable power efficiency. This architecture, by design, inherits a few qualities conventional computers are lacking. For example, evolvability, fault and noise tolerance, high power efficiency, non-volatile memory, enhanced computing, collocated processing and memory. In addition, neuromorphic architecture also removes the issue of separate processing and memory units. Additionally, the amount of data that needs to be processed grows exponentially in every field. So the need for dense computing power along with novel approaches to data analysis and understanding increases as well. While addressing these issues, neuromorphic computers became the solution, also marking the beginning of the third stage of artificial intelligence development. The neuromorphic concept is still at infant age, but the potential it bears will change the path of technology drastically within a few years. In the near future robots and AI programs will be much more sophisticated than their current versions. Imagine having fully humanoid robots living among us. Mind-controlled machines. Worldwide intelligent AIs high-caliber medical equipment, fast and efficient medical research and many more. No matter what the future holds, developments like these always make it exciting to hope for the future. That's it for this video. If you have anything to say, let me know in the comments. Meet you in another video.